Hello again. Thank you for joining me. And finding out what's important to you, you can then recognize how you can elicit values from other people. So I'd like you to do an exercise now. So pause the video. And this exercise is you writing out what's important to you. What are the most important things in life to you? And specifically, what's important about them? Let's take three things. Three things in life that are important to you. And what is actually important about them? And then we'll start the video again. Thank you. Hello again. Thank you for joining me. Now, I hope you've got a good list of who or what is to blame for you not having what you ought to have, should have, can have, will have, do have, am having. Hmm. Uh, linguistics, I oh, love them. We'll talk more about them shortly. Though, I hope you've got a good list of who or what is to blame because it's our default setting. If we want to achieve something, want things to be better, and we're always striving for more, then our default setting is to find out where the blame is so we can fix it, so that we can be everything that we want to be, have everything that we want to have. Blame frame. But I want to now talk about the blame frame versus the outcome frame. And it's also referred to as drilling down to values. And I'd also like to introduce you to the yeah but fairy. When people are talking about things in the course, I'll introduce them to the yeah but fairy and they'll be quite confused. And I'll say, I want to introduce you because she'll be making an appearance quite soon. And as soon as the very first person says, yeah, but I bring up the fairy. Excuses reveal our blame framing. For example, the phrase, I thought you were thinking of cutting the lawn. And the response may be, Yes, I was, but now I'm thinking of painting the fence. Ha ha, little joke. Blame frame creates disempowerment. Because if it's somebody else's fault that you don't have what you want, or can go where you want to go, or achieve what you want to achieve, if it's somebody else's fault, then you're kind of stuck, you're disempowered. And there are some things that you cannot change. Though I'd like you to recognize for a moment there's some principles of Kabbalah, I'd like to tell you. This is again a science, it's not a belief system. That there are different levels of existence, different levels of life, if you like. There is the still level, like the rocks stones, bricks, concrete. Everything that doesn't move is still. That's the first level. The second level is the vegetative. Things that have roots, that grow. That life, vegetable life, organic, but rooted in the ground. And the next level is the animate level things that aren't rooted in the ground so they can move they can run away from danger and the last level is the speaking level we speak human level the speaking level so the still the vegetative the animate and the speaking. Which means that 
each level is superior to the one below. The rock can't get out of the way. It will be eroded by the waves, for example. So the still level, it still can't move. The vegetative level, a plant that's planted in the wrong soil, in the wrong location, that's not conducive to life, will wither and die if it's not watered, if it's not cared for, if it's not sheltered. It can't uproot itself and go somewhere. Whereas the animate level can. Animals can run away from danger. They can seek shelter. They can go and get food. They move about. So the speaking level can do all of those things and communicate, use language, philosophize, predict future, lament the past. So, in other words, us here at the speaking level, if we're in an environment that's not conducive to our well being, we can get the heck out. So many things we can do. Whilst we might not be able to change our environment, and we can have a big impact on our environment, we can just pack up our bags and go to a different, more conducive environment. It's better for our well being. Though you can ponder now on the reasons, all the reasons why we don't do that. And perhaps to do that in excess, with no compassion or regard for others, may not be the right thing to do either. Oh, there's no right, there's no wrong. But if you're in danger, you can move to a different environment and you can communicate about that danger. There's a lot you can do for your own well-being. Yes, I'm talking about you. I'm also talking about all the clients that you'll have. Friends, family too. How distressing that is for you when you give all that good advice and it's not received or acted upon. And then you begin to learn their values. All this stuff is really going to help you out. So blame frame creates disempowerment because you reckon there's a lot that you cannot change. And perhaps there's more that you can change that you'd realised before. Values drive your experience. Values drive other people's experience. Do you like murder mysteries, by the way? Do you like... Well, do you prefer Colombo to Agatha Christie or perhaps Bergerac? Sometimes not knowing how things are going to turn out is so compelling to us. And your unconscious mind, and certainly the creative part, loves a mystery. We love trying to figure things out. Yet sometimes regarding our own life, we want it all sorted. But if it was all sorted and predictable and the same day after day. Think about that job you really, really wanted and you're so excited and you're worried that you wouldn't get and you got it and it was fabulous and then 10 years on, knowing exactly how every single day is going to go or fighting for change to make each day different, gives it a different perspective. Well, the unconscious mind and your creative part thrives on complexity and comes up with solutions all the time. Often we're not listening and NLP is going to help you to listen. Now we're, we're getting interesting, aren't we? So what we've just learned, values, how to elicit values by focusing on what's important. Secret programs, why we do certain things, how we do certain things, why not to use the word why, and the things that are important to us when we're under duress, when the time we have to get ready is halved, for example. We can really drill down 
to values. Values drive our behavior. And once we know what's valuable to someone or to ourselves, we can then start talking about state dependent behavior. Choice is entwined with state dependent behavior. Very, very important. Our state can be changed by internal or external stimuli. Yes, you really did only go out to the supermarket for that bottle of milk, didn't you? Look what you came back with. Mm. Who's been working on you while you were out? Maybe not even while you were out. Maybe the work on your desires and your creativity and other levels of your being happened a while ago by various adverts that you watched. As soon as you saw that thing, whatever it was, when you were out there in the supermarket, when your attention was being distracted by lots of other things, just grabbed what you'd been programmed to grab. 